Hello everyone. Um, welcome to another Open Cluster Management Community Meetings. Um, today we're going to continue our deep dive into the policy framework. Um, so we're very excited to have Will Cutler to share his presentation with us. Um, so whenever you're ready, Will, please take it away. Um, hi, uh, I'm Will Cutler. I'm going to be taking over uh, the second part of the configuration policy. Uh, demo because uh, Yusao is on uh, PTO. So um, in the previous demo, uh, he covered uh, kind of the basics of the configuration policy controller, which is just kind of checking for and creating and deleting resources and editing them. Um, and today we're going to be looking at a little more advanced uh, use cases um, where we can actually use configuration policies to enhance the functionality of ACM as a whole. Um, and the, the chief way we're going to be looking at that is uh, by leveraging the power of that policy framework to uh, install Gatekeeper. Um, so let me just share my screen really quick. Um, give me one second. Um, I'm on a new work computer and I have to fix my references, I guess. Um, I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to quit the app. Um, I'll be back on in one second. So I'll, I'll jump, dropping off. Um, Mike, so there was two items on today's agenda. Is it true or yep. is it just the open? Okay. Yep. There's uh, two items. So, okay, Will's back. Let's see if he can. Okay. Hi. Um, yeah, sorry about that. I, I didn't realize that was going to happen. Um, okay, so my screen share should be on now, I think. Um, yep. So, yeah, so this is the uh, the governance policy framework uh, readme. This is uh, kind of the, the base for um, where all of the resources I'm going to use can be found. Um, so if we go down here to usage examples, um, we can see kind of the basic stuff um, that's already been covered. And today we're going to be looking at this part here, um, the advanced usage. Um, so let me just pull up, uh, this is just the Gatekeeper website, um, just for a quick overview of what Gatekeeper is before we start um, working with it. Um, so Gatekeeper just kind of uh, extensifies the, the already existing um, policy library. Um, it allows you to add um, what's called constraints and constraint templates. Um, to uh, go through and check uh, resources for, for various things um, and then um, see if, uh, both check if uh, existing resources uh, violate those constraints and if uh, newly created resources also uh, violate those constraints. So that's kind of the basics of uh, what we're going to be working with. Um, now I'll get into, uh, I'll get into the actual demo. So um, we're going to start uh, with this first policy. Um, all of the policies I'm going to use um, today are uh, are contained in this repo. Um, so this is the uh, this is the policy that we can use to actually install um, the gatekeeper operator. Um, so we can see that it's set to enforce, so it's going to create all of the following resources. Um, and I'll just go through them really quick. So um, the first resource uh, we have is just uh, to create uh, this namespace. Um, that's the first uh, policy template. Um, and that'll just create this gatekeeper system namespace. Um, and that's where we're going to just deploy um, the gatekeeper operator um, and all of the custom resources for it. Um, the next uh, configuration policy um, that's kind of contained in this policy is uh, the catalog source policy. Um, and that's, uh, that just creates uh, this catalog source. And catalog source is just a repository of uh, a bunch of uh, objects that are needed to set up the operator. Um, next, uh, it's going to create an operator group. Um, uh, we can see all of these, by the way, have the must-have, so it's going to uh, enforce and create all of them. Um, and even though it says inform here, it's going to be overridden by uh, the enforce up here. So all of these will, all of these objects will be created on the managed cluster. Um, so anyway, this operator group uh, is going to set um, all of the role permissions uh, for that gatekeeper system namespace uh, for us to install the operator into. Um, then we have, uh, we're going to create the subscription, um, and that's just going to keep the operator um, up to date. And then finally, um, we have the actual uh, gatekeeper custom resource that we're going to create. Um, and this is used by a, a, a gatekeeper operator controller 
um, to actually uh, pull in some of this info on uh, how we want to configure the operator um, and actually install it. Um, and then at the bottom here, we've just got our placement binding and our placement rule, like most other policies. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's go ahead and create that. So I've uh, I've created a cluster here. Um, I have a cluster and a managed cluster. Um, the cluster is called hub and the managed cluster is called cluster one. And I haven't uh, deployed any policies or the gatekeeper yet. So we're going to do that here. Um, we can see here I have uh, this install gatekeeper.yaml policy, which is just the, the same policy that I just showed. Um, make sure I'm on the hub. Um, yeah, so we're on the hub. Um, I'm going to go ahead and apply that policy. Um, I can, I'm just going to do it in the default namespace, um, but you could you could apply it in any namespace. Um, and we can see here that that policy, which contains all of those configuration policies uh, that I just showed, uh, the placement binding and the placement rule have all been created on the hub. Um, so if I go here and check the policies, um, we can see that the policy hasn't uh, quite been uh, finished yet. It might take a little bit. Um, but when this policy goes to compliant, um, we should be able to see that uh, all of those resources for the uh, for the gatekeeper operator um, should be created on the on the managed cluster. So instead of just waiting for this to go compliant, um, I'm just going to go uh, over to the hub and we can check that out. Um, Um, so now that we're on the hub, um, we can check for those configuration policies that I just showed. It's going to be in the cluster one namespace. Yeah, so we can see um, we can see now that all of these uh, these configuration policies that we wanted to create um, have been created. Um, and uh, let's see, let's see if this is installed yet. Um, so we can go over now to that um, gatekeeper system uh, namespace uh, that we created with the policy. Right, and now we can see that uh, 28 seconds ago, 41 seconds ago, um, all of these pods were created in that gatekeeper system namespace that we also created um, with the policy. Um, so we can see here uh, we have the uh, the audit, uh, the controller manager, uh, and the actual operator pods. And then if I also um, just really quick uh, check the operators that we have on this cluster, uh, we can see that uh, this gatekeeper operator uh, is here now. Um, so yeah, so now uh, that the uh, the gatekeeper uh, policy, we've used a configuration policy to actually uh, install it. Um, let's see what we can do with it. Um, so now I'm going to show the next policy that we have, um, which is a policy where we're actually um, creating a uh, a policy to use Gatekeeper rather than a, a configuration policy to uh, to install it. So um, <clears throat> here's our sample uh, Gatekeeper policy. Um, we can see up here again the the, uh, the parent remediation action is set to enforce. So all of these are set to create. Um, for the demo, I've actually deleted this so that we can um, inform on the lower parts of the policy and enforce this. Um, so uh, for the for the purpose of the demo, all of the remediation actions are going to be um, the ones specified per configuration policy. Um, so this first configuration policy here, um, it uh, creates the constraint and the constraint template, um, which is what Gatekeeper uses to actually um, enforce the rule on the cluster um, and violate on any um, on any uh, anything that doesn't match up properly with it. Um, so for the purpose of the demo, we're going to be looking at this uh, Kate's uh, required labels uh, constraint, which basically means that um, we're going to check um, all of a specific kind of resource, um, in this case a namespace, uh, 
um, to make sure that it has a label that we want it to have. Um, and in this case, uh, we're just uh, we're just looking at uh, the label uh, gatekeeper, uh, which is down here. So um, first, this uh, constraint template um, basically uh, provides this uh, this rule, this Rego rule. Um, Rego is a query language uh, that is used by uh, OPA gatekeeper. Um, there's a lot more uh, details on it kind of on the uh, OPA site, um, but for the purpose of the demo, um, basically this is just gonna go through and um, any time that it finds a resource that we want it to look at that doesn't have uh, the labels that we want it to look for, um, it will violate and say that we must provide those labels. And then down here, we have the actual constraint, um, and this is kind of the, um, provides the data for the template to look for. So we have, um, we can see here, we're looking for um, any namespace, um, and uh, specifically, um, OCM and test uh, are the namespaces that it's going to look at. So it's going to ignore the namespaces that aren't in that list. Um, uh, I'd like to note that if you can, you can um, do an, you can put an asterisk here if you want it to search for, uh, you know, all of that resource. But for the purpose of the demo, we're just going to look at um, these two namespaces, or just really test. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much um, kind of the first part of the configuration policy. And this is going to kind of create the rule um, that Gatekeeper is going to use. Um, and then we have um, the second part of the policy here. Um, and this is the audit portion of the policy. Um, and the audit functionality that Gatekeeper has is basically that it's going to check all of the existing resources on the cluster um, to make sure that they don't uh, violate that constraint. So um, when it does that, um, it's going to create this uh, Kate's required labels object. Um, and that's what we're actually checking with the configuration policy. So we have this set to inform. Um, and uh, we have total violations. What we want to look for is uh, total violation set to zero. So that means if, uh, if Gatekeeper goes through and creates this Kate's required labels object and uh, it has more violations than zero, um, it's going to create a, a violation of its own in our configuration policy, which is going to make um, this entire policy uh, non-compliant. So we would we would know that something is up um, if uh, this total violations is is higher than zero. Um, and then for the third part, um, we have the admission portion of the policy, um, and the admission uh, webhook uh, the gatekeeper provides um, will basically stop the creation of any object that violates um, those constraints that we uh, that we specified earlier. Um, so um, that's already going to happen um, from creating the constraints, but then this policy here um, we have set to inform on uh, any events that are created, um, and that's the way that the, web the webhook works is that um, anytime it denies the creation of an object, it'll create an event for it. Um, so we're looking in Gatekeeper system for those events. And if uh, this policy finds that uh, one of those events have created that a, a object was uh, denied when trying to be created, um, it will create a violation on this policy and the whole policy will go non-compliant so we can see that there's a violation. Um, and then again, we have the placement binding and the placement rule at the bottom here. Um, so let me go back to my cluster here and I'll actually um, apply that. So I have to go back to the hub first. Okay, so now I'm on the hub, um, going to go ahead and apply this uh, gatekeeper required labels policy. Uh, and again, I'm just gonna apply it in default. Uh, it can be applied in any, anywhere. Um, and we can see that um, now we have uh, these, these three objects created. Uh, again, the policy, the placement binding, and the placement rule. Um, so I'll wait for that to go for a second. Um, but we should be able to see that when we get all the policies in the default namespace, um, we have, uh, we've now gone through and we found um, that uh, this gatekeeper uh, sample is gonna be non-compliant. Um, so now let's dive a little bit further into that um, and actually, uh, go on to the managed cluster. OK, 
Okay, so now we're on the uh, manage cluster here. And if we get all of the configuration policies, um, we'll be able to see that um, those configuration policies from our policy were created in the manage cluster. So here we have um, our admission, our audit, and our required labels. Um, so um, here we can see, uh, let's see. So let's go to the audit one. So the audit one should be compliant because I haven't created any namespaces um, on this cluster that should uh, violate that the test namespace hasn't uh, been created. So I didn't specify the namespace. Okay, cool. So yeah, so we can see that um, this policy is checking for this case required labels object, uh, which uh, has been found um, and there's no violations in it. So it's been marked as uh, compliant. Um, if we just want to check that uh, object. Um, we'll find that um, this object is also going to have uh, the no violations that we're looking for um, because I haven't created that test uh, namespace on this cluster yet. Um, so we can see I'm actually looking for test and test create here. Um, so now uh, let's try uh, looking at that admission webhook. So if I just create a namespace, um, it's not going to have that gatekeeper label uh, by default. Um, so that means that uh, it's going to violate on this admission webhook. So if I just create this test create namespace, we can see here that we have this error from server um, denied by this uh, by the same uh, constraint that we were just looking at. Um, that I must provide these labels, and uh, because of that, um, I wasn't be able I wasn't able to create the namespace. So if I go here. Um, and look at all of the namespaces I've created, we can see that that test create isn't in there because uh, the gatekeeper webhook has denied it. Um, and then let me go back to that configuration policy. Um, right, so if we go back here and we look at this admission policy that we created that's looking for those events, um, we will be able to see that that uh, event that we just found uh, is right. Okay, so yeah, so we see that um, the event found uh, that we that we couldn't create uh, this test create namespace, um, and thus the uh, entire policy is uh, is not compliant. Um, this is this is also why um, the policy was was not compliant before, um, is because this this namespace already had. Um, an event on it um, from just me testing this previously. But um, normally when you start, uh, it would be non-compliant until uh, you create this, uh, this event. Um, so now I'm going to go back and show uh, the audit policy really quick. Um, so for that, we have to go back to the hub and actually remove that, uh, that policy that we already created so that we can create a uh, object first. Um, okay. Um, so we're going to go through here um, and we're going to delete uh, all of the uh, objects in this required labels policy, which is the, the one that uh, we're using for the sample. Um, so we can see that all of these have been uh, deleted, and now now that those have been deleted, um, let's go back to the hub. Uh, or sorry, back to the manage cluster. Right. So now we're on the manage cluster, and uh, we can recall that we were looking for those test and test create namespaces. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and create um, a namespace called test. Um, 
whoops, I have to actually delete that. Um, I have to delete that Kate's required labels object because it doesn't um, doesn't delete automatically when you delete the policy. It'll stay on the cluster. Okay, so now we've deleted that object uh, that was created by the policy previously, um, and now we should be able to create our namespace test. So we can see that now that we've deleted that um, that whole constraint, um, the the webhook is not looking for um, this anymore, and we can uh, freely create whatever namespace we want. Um, so if I just uh, go and get this test namespace really quick, um, and uh, dive into it a little bit. Um, we can see that the only label we have here is uh, this uh, Kubernetes name label. Um, we don't have that gatekeeper label uh, that the policy is going to look for. Um, so now if we go back to the hub, so if we go back to the hub um, and uh, we reapply this policy that we were uh, using before, um, and recreate that constraint um, that I just deleted. Um, we should be able to see that uh, it will find this uh, this test namespace uh, in the uh, in the audit webhook um, and uh, and create a violation. Um, so um, we'll go back again to the managed cluster. Um, so now we're on the managed cluster, um, and we'll go and check out the configuration policies. Well, so now we can see that all of these policies have been created in the last few seconds. Um, and if we go and we check this audit policy here, So we can see now um, that it is uh, it is generated non-compliant, which is going to uh, propagate up to the uh, the hub cluster, so that that hub policy will also be non-compliant now. Um, and we can see here that it's found this uh, this case required labels object that the constraint uh, created, um, but it's not as specified, um, and that means that um, there's a there's been a mismatch, um, and the mismatch is going to be here, where the total violations will be um, higher than zero. So if we go and just check that object out really quick, um, yeah. it's required labels object called NS must have GK. And look at the contents of that. We can see here that um, the total violations, uh, the gatekeeper, gatekeepers updated it to one. Um, the violation is that uh, we must provide the labels gatekeeper because we haven't and that's on the namespace test that I just created. Um, <clears throat> so that's pretty much it, I believe, for the um, for the gatekeeper policy itself. Um, we can see that we can um, both audit, uh, well, we can create the uh, gatekeeper installation policy to actually install gatekeeper, and then once we've done that, we can create configuration policy to uh, create constraints for gatekeeper. We can create one to check uh, the audit and the admission scenarios. Um, so I'll just go back here really quick to the um, to the README again. Um, just another um, scenario I'd like to talk about a little bit um, that we can uh, use uh, configuration policies to in integrate with uh, Kuverno. Um, and that's, uh, it's, it's I'll, I'll go to the website here. It's um, kind of a similar scenario to Gatekeeper, so I won't go as deep into it. Um, basically, um, uh, Kubernetes can can go through and uh, it can validate resources. It can mutate them, uh, create uh, new resources. It's kind of another extension to the uh, to the to the resource and policy framework. Um, so we don't uh, actually have a policy to install uh, Kubernetes yet, like we do with Gatekeeper. Um, but I'll just look really quick at um, how we could uh, use uh, Kubernetes if we were already um, if we had already installed it with policies. Um, so we can hear, see here, um, we can, uh, it's, it's similar to Gatekeeper where we can create a policy to actually enforce um, this rule um, that Kiberno will, uh, will use. 
So it's going to enforce this uh, this required labels rule, which is going to be work very similarly to um, to the policy that I just showed in Gatekeeper. The formatting is just a little different um, because of the the framework. Um, so this is going to check for um, actually a different label is going to check for this uh, name label. And then once we apply it, um, and if we have uh, Giverno installed, it'll go through and uh, create a custom resource uh, with any violations uh, similar to Gatekeeper. So um, we have another policy here that we can use uh, to actually report those violations to the parent policy um, so we can see not compliant if it fails. Um, and this will go through um, and we'll check for uh, this policy report and cluster policy report. Um, and much like the um, audit scenario in uh, Gatekeeper, um, it'll check for uh, the status being uh, fail, uh, and it's a must not have. So uh, if, if that status is fail, um, just like if the uh, violations were higher than zero on the audit um, in Gatekeeper, uh, this whole policy will go non-compliant, um, and we'll be able to see from the policy hub um, that a violation has been generated. Um, so that's, that's pretty much all I have. Um, for today on the uh, kind of extension of, uh, of policies using, um, using stuff like Gatekeeper and Cuverno and installing them with uh, the configuration policy. Um, does anyone have any questions? Thank you, Will. That was an excellent presentation. Um, if there are no other questions, then I'm going to quickly switch over to um, To highlight the cluster admin that was um, demonstrated as a proof of concept uh, two weeks ago, and Dominic has um, done a great amount of work to implement um, um, the cluster admin CLI. So to quickly demo the um, what we have currently, and we're continuing looking for community um, contribution on this side. So on the left side, I have the hub cluster, a kind hub cluster. On the way, I have the uh, manage or to be manage um, cluster one kind cluster. So and go first install the install the um, cluster admin CLI. Okay, we can see that it's installed. And on the hub side, I just need to run the init command, and then it will generate the the command that I needed to um, to run on the uh, to be managed cluster side. I have to replace the cluster. So now I can go accept on the hub side to accept the managed cluster, but um, it does take a few minutes before the registration is complete, and we can watch that with with the managed clusters as well. Oh, so the managed cluster is here, and this is here as well. So now we can go over on the hub side. And So if we check the managed cluster again on the hub side, we can see, and just with these three commands and very quickly, we already have a, a managed cluster register. So to test, to test um, the registration is okay. I have a managed cluster work that can um, deploy a quick pod down to, from the hub, uh, propagate down to the managed cluster one. If I look at manage cluster namespace, so it, again, it does take a while to um, for the controller to pick up the manifest work and synch synchronize it and propagate it down to manage cluster. And then when it's finished reconciling, I just I suspect, I, I'm expecting there's going to be a pod on this side.
So it does take a, a quick minute. But when I finish, but what I want to showcase today is how much faster it is to use a cluster admin to register the managed cluster compared to before where we use the the operator SDK OLM deployment or the other method. Okay, that's it does take a little bit while to sync up and we're um running behind uh, a minute beyond the time schedule already. So again, um we're looking for more contribution and even feedback on the cluster admin on CLI. Um if there are no any questions, oh there's some. okay, if there are no any questions then I'm gonna do the meeting for today. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you. Take care, guys. Bye.